Hi, my name is Kenneth Kendrick. I work for Peanut Corporation of America back in 2006, uh, hired on as production planner. I kind of want to go into three parts just quickly in each of the areas where uh, the provision of this Whistleblower Act might have changed some things and hopefully will change things in the future uh, from what happened to me in 2006 to when this was reported in 2009 and then the personal effects we have now. At the time when I was working with Peanut Corp in 2006, and I was only there four months, not exactly the kind of business you want to spend a lifetime working in for obvious reasons, still can't eat peanuts on the airplane too well. Uh, I had came in more as an organizational person. I'd worked at a lab in the meat testing industry, so that's kind of why I was hired on with PCA, but it was more in an organizational role. I uh, didn't pretend to be a microbiologist or have any of that knowledge, but common sense workers on the floor can tell you a whole lot when you go into a building where water's leaking on the roof and, and birds are on the roof and then take a scientist to figure out bird droppings washing into a plant aren't exactly the best thing for the public health information. Where this provision comes in, now I was trying to report this anonymously to the Texas Department of Health. Doing it anonymously obviously didn't carry the sort of weight it would if I could put my name and go, I'm this position, my name is this, this is what's going on. Had to do it that way because as uh, we talked about, the companies have the money and the attorneys and at the point I was doing this, I certainly didn't have legal fees. I wasn't familiar with agencies uh, such as GAP and those things being out there. So as I'm sending these anonymous emails and doing things to the Texas Department of Health, didn't understand that the Texas Department of Health didn't even know the peanut plant existed in Texas and they had never been visited. They'd been visited by the uh, Texas Department of Agriculture and certified, so from my perspective, to be certified organically by the Texas Department of Agriculture, you have to have a Texas Department of Health license. Apparently they missed that, the Department of Agriculture. So I'm sending anonymous emails to an agency about a plant that they don't even know exists, even though there's a huge billboard pointing right to it. <laughs> Peanut Corporation of America outlet store. Local health department, well, we didn't know they weren't registered with the state. Now, we didn't know they were also selling peanuts out of there. <laughs> uh, to our local public at an outlet store. So, had this law been in place, it would have been a little more comfortable for me to maybe be public at that time with my name. Don't know if it would have worked or not. Was I scared of being sued? Yes. I do not come from a wealthy family where I can afford to defend against what. Uh, I knew the investors of PCA had, and uh, they were very lawyer conscious and had uh, their insurance policies in place for people like me who might come forward very, very well prepared, or Mr. Parnell was very well prepared on that part, obviously, as, as we've seen from there. And I knew that uh, products were shipped from Georgia to Texas and back and forth. I had, uh, in the news at the, when this uh, outbreak had broke out in Georgia, we talked a lot about the first Nestle audit where Nestle had came in and filled them on an audit. I was there for Nestle's second audit, which no one has looked at as of yet, which, and it wasn't much better than the first audit. So I did the reports the best I could at that time. The second Nestle audit taught me a lot and taught me a lot of what was going wrong. I had to, I had to learn from this person and go, these are the sort of testings we need to be doing. We weren't doing environmental testing for, when I say environmental testing, this is where you get swabs and go throughout the plant and you're going to try to find if there's E. coli, salmonella, whatever, out on the floor. Coming from a lab, uh, I knew a little bit about that, was able to take the advice from Nestle, knew we weren't going to get the contract, they were just humoring us. Although I did have a plant manager in Georgia say uh, when we sent off our first sampling, you know, if you microwave those sponges, they would, uh, our results would look a lot better. Didn't tell me to microwave them. Just let me know that the results would look a lot better if we did. I heard later that uh, from a reporter that it, it got information from the uh, Texas Open Records Act that uh, once the Texas Department of Health finally figured out they existed, they, they asked that current plant manager, if you're going to microwave them, well, how would you do it? And he showed them. I thought it was a little bit curious that I would, and you see it dries them out. I went, well, I guess you tried that. <laughs> I wouldn't have known before uh, to do that. So after not being, you know, couldn't get the appropriate attention, 
to get someone out there and decided to move on for various reasons. I quit on my own accord and it, it, it just wasn't gonna work. Didn't know the impact it would have years later in my life. But uh, if I had not had the fear of retaliation, maybe in 2006, we could have stopped this altogether. If somebody looks at Texas, maybe they look at Georgia, maybe some other people live. This came back and even affected my family personally, not knowing some of the contracts they got. Uh, so on my way out, the best I could do, and the plant manager that I was there with, who was an honest man at the time, trying to do his best without any money, uh, I brought in the lab director from where I'd worked before to uh, have what they called their quality assurance staff learn how to do environmental testing, learn how to send these off to a labs. I did not realize at the time that she was training someone with an eighth grade education to be the quality assurance director for the plant. So we're talking about someone, and, and I'm not downplaying someone who's not educated, but for that type of position when you're dealing with E. coli, salmonella, EB, all sorts of disease vectors, and we're not even on the GED level, this is the person we had doing environmental inspections after I left. But it was the best that I could set up at the time, hoping that things would get better, and I left and tried to move on with my life. Then, in 2009, the Georgia plant finally hits the news and people are sick. So now I'm back on the email because uh, I'm like, no, look, what we're seeing in the media is not right. There's not testing being done every hour. It was only done on request. If a company did not request what we called a certificate of analysis for the lab results, you got whatever peanuts we sent you. And it was amazing to me that uh, there was no regular testing schedule, only if a company requested one. The reason being, too expensive, didn't want to spend the money on it. We're not going to test regularly. Now, I knew in the beef industry, there's testing every hour and other things. Peanut industry, there was no such standard set that testing, you know, need to pull a sample every hour, need to pull a sample every day. Heck, I'd have settled for that at that point. Randomly went out. I had to go to the website and figure out what the results should look like and what the standards were because no one at Peanut Corp knew well, they get a certificate of analysis. Is this too high? Is this too low? I had to do the internet research to figure that out. So when this broke in 2009, uh, thank goodness during my email campaigns, the Department of Health is, I'm, I'm just yelling and screaming, trying to get a hold of anyone I could. Uh, Safe Tables, our priority was the one place that answered and kind of got me in the media at that point and got me set up with FDA investigators which was difficult. And this is where you take the personal interest. In a million years, I never would have guessed that Peanut Corporation of America could get a contract with a big company. Nestle had done an audit and, uh, yeah, we're not buying anything from you guys. We have some standards. But somehow Kellogg's did have. And so three years later, I have no clue that Peanut Corp of America is selling uh, to Kellogg's, selling peanut butter to Kellogg's. And here I, my family, with my granddaughter, who I think the world of, and this chokes me up, and my mother-in-law were living with us at the time, and she had cancer, and I'm giving them Austin brand crackers because my granddaughter's sick, and because my mother-in-law is sick, and it was the only thing she liked. So this came back around to bite me by not being able to get attention because uh, those crackers were tainted. To this day, my granddaughter will still go down the aisle and go crackers make you sick. She's only four now, she was just two at the time. So this is where you take your personal interest, you never know when it's gonna come back to bite you yourself. And that was gut-wrenching to know that she was having salmonella symptoms and I'm feeding her crackers from a company that I used to work for going, how could anyone ever give them a contract? Of course, they had third-party people looking at it. No one's testing the final product wasn't in their interest to, pe to test the end product. And that was where my involvement with Kellogg's was, which was also one of the people I was yelling and screaming trying to get attention from. And once again, I think Nancy Donnelly from Stop from getting there, and then she got me with Gap also, so that I was able to go public and go on television and be able to say those things. 
because at the time that Georgia was being looked at and people were dying, no one was looking at Texas. It took a lot of yelling and screaming and me saying there's no regular testing as was advertised on their website going on. They tried to say there was uh, no products going back and forth from Georgia to Texas. I watched those trucks get loaded and go back and forth, brought in the peanut butter from Georgia into the Texas plant. I knew it was there, or it at least it happened in the past when I worked there. And so even pitching the fit, going public, still took a while to get the FDA's attention. Then finally the Texas Department of Health goes, oh wow, maybe that plant does exist, huh? Maybe we should go out there and look at that. Took them two trips to figure out where the problem was and I had to explain on the phone, hey, uh, did you look at the leaky roof? Did you look at the false ceiling? Let me draw you a map <laughs> of this plant so you can look at the flooded basement. So when we talk about putting some of the things on the state level, we know that can vary from state to state. The uh, Peanut Producers Board in Texas and went on television shortly after I did once when I was telling my story about how I had been blackballed after being a whistleblower and said, we've made changes never named a specific one. Uh, I know the Texas Department of Health got with the Texas Department of Agriculture. They ran some cross matches and found over 500 plants, or 500 food facilities. Uh, Tracy may help me, it was, uh, it was 523, something like that. Over 500 places who had never been uh, registered with the Texas Department of Health, so who had never been inspected. So there's 500 places with no regulation whatsoever who had never been looked at. And that was just one tape match. They're still being opened and there was absolutely no civil penalty. When I called their press secretary, it was, well, we want to get people into compliance. If, I get, if I'm speeding, the officer is going to give me a ticket. He's not going to get me in compliance. When you have uh, 500 plants who didn't bother registering with the Texas Department of Health, the state result was, well, let's just get them registered. We don't care that you went this many years or ever how long it was without being regulated. Something everyone needs to be aware of. It's not good for the state, I would think, on uh, their economic front, but sometimes we don't think that far ahead. So uh, with that happening in 2009, getting finally got that plan investigated, it, it took a personal toll with the crackers that it went through with my family with me not knowing any better, which made me look real stupid, by the way. Here I am feeding my family stuff that came from that plant not knowing any better. You can just picture how horrible I felt about making my own family sick because even I couldn't have guessed that PCA could pull off a contract like that. And kind of the third thing I wanted to go into is in the whistleblower laws is where that has affected my life now. I have literally set in on job interviews when I'd worked for the state of Texas in social services, set in with private companies, said, we recognize you from the news. You're very qualified for this position, but we, and I've been told this directly twice, we are not going to hire you because we know you're a whistleblower. You're smart enough to know everything there is to know about this job. And if we're doing something wrong, we're afraid you'll turn us in. Sorry, you're qualified, but we're not going to have you. And when this broke out in 2009, I was working for another, uh, for a medical company. It was FDA regulated and it was Watch Kenneth. So when I got sick and went in the hospital, they got rid of me as quickly as they could. Since then, my income's been in half, been cut in half. My family and I are looking at foreclosure. I mean, the, the financial, personal, family problems that have resulted in doing that were enormous. So that's where when we start getting these laws in place, to protect people because there is still a fear out there and the toll it took on my life was enormous in doing that one. I would do it again because you have no choice. I'm not going to let people die. But without those laws in place, it has a very, and excuse me, I get emotional, a very devastating effect on the people who have came forward and they did have reason to be fearful of doing it. The employees that were there had reason to be fearful of doing it. it uh, it took a toll on my life and it takes a toll on the other people who report this and you have to be careful how you do it. So I'm glad to see some legislation come through. Even with this legislation, I would have been scared not to be anonymous. But that's just kind of a brief overview of my story uh, on what we're doing coming forward and even leaving that plant. I was glad to hear Mr. Marlar talk about the possible prosecution of some of the PCA staff 
when you're the one who felt like you've done the right thing and your life falls apart and the owner is now a consultant in the peanut industry and is financially prospering, that is extremely something that will make you extremely angry that your life has fallen apart that, and I'm one of the lucky ones that I caught it new enough about it to quit feeding my family those crackers. Other people died, lost much more than I can ever dream of because of it. And this man is still prospering as a consultant. And uh, I hope the public pressure stays on there to change that. I appreciate you guys' time.